51 Victoria Ave is one of the latest buildings to have work completed with assistance from the Whanganui Heritage Grant Fund Scheme. The prominent corner site on the city's Golden Mile houses a few businesses, including two retailers on the ground floor, the iconic Orange Cafe, which has occupied the site for decades, and new salon, The Colour Room. We have been working with the owners of that building for a while now because there's issues with restoring the sash windows, the paintwork on the building needs revisiting. Um, there's also earthquake strengthening on the horizon for that site. So when there are building owners who are proactive and want to do the right thing, and especially for the community when it's such a prominent site, then we want to be able to help out as best we can. And it's one of the oldest brick buildings on the avenue. So there's that too. During cleanup work, original signs were discovered and have been preserved. Built in 1902, the former post office is a Category B heritage building. But the Heritage Grant Fund is not just for registered heritage buildings. Some buildings have heritage significance, but they may not officially be so. So part of the Heritage Grant Fund is about making things as simple as possible and recognising that you have an old building, you want to do some work that has public benefit, so you can be considered for that funding. You don't necessarily have to be on the district plan or with Heritage New Zealand, but ideally we'd be doing some work that gets you on the way to getting scheduled because that those protections are really good to have in place. Development of a heritage strategy for Whanganui began in 2019 and a draft document was released for public consultation in 2020. The strategy was well received and is due to be adopted after some agreed amendments. Heritage is a vital element of Whanganui's identity. Um, it's a draw card for visitors, new residents and businesses alike. Uh, it identifies Wanganui's uniqueness and is a crucial aspect of establishing our sense of place. But Wanganui's heritage assets face a number of challenges in the next decade and the Wanganui heritage strategy makes Council's aims and objectives clear um, and accountable to the community and it provides a framework to initiate actions and allocate resources. 28 submissions have been received and there's broad support for the document. Nine of those submitters will address this committee this, this morning. Thank you Mr Chairman and thank you councillors for affording me the opportunity to speak to my submission. People like me and, and, and others sadly gone, Norm Hubbard and Craig Mills and Wendy Pettigrew and Derek Matthews, um, have campaigned for this kind of uh, policy in the Council for 40 years. They would all have been pleased to have seen that we've got to this point. And I think it's an acceptance by this Council that the conservation of our heritage buildings, the establishment um, uh, of the environment that they create, um, is good sense economically, environmentally and sustainability. It has become core business, and this is illustrated by Council's own actions. Maintaining Whanganui's heritage is now recognised as important for the local economy, but it is hard to quantify. In Whanganui, heritage is really, really significant because so many of the tourist attractions have a heritage focus, but also when you think about how many buildings on, say, the avenue are heritage, then that's an economic factor to consider too. So it's really difficult to quantify, but we know it's really, really significant. The Heritage Grant Fund is not just for buildings, it's also for facilities like parks and other places of historical significance. Places like Cook's Gardens, where, you know, Peter Snell won there, and there's all, all kinds of historic things that have happened there. So it's not necessarily about built heritage, although the Heritage Grant Fund has always been pretty strongly about built heritage because that's where a lot, of, a lot of the cost challenges are. Heritage New Zealand has suggested increasing the fund to include wider heritage projects, including archaeology and Māori heritage. Heritage connects really strongly with people's sense of place. It, it helps people to understand what, where they are, why they are here and all that kind of stuff. And it connects with well-being, so people feel better being in a place if they can resonate with it and understand a little more of the long-standing stories. So, I mean, Council, the Resource Management Act and stuff recognise well-being 
as an important factor for local government stuff. The Heritage Grant Fund has more than doubled and the scope increased after the National Heritage Equip Fund was put on hold due to COVID, the decision particularly affecting Whanganui because of the high number of heritage buildings. 363 district plan heritage items, yeah, and something like 40 to 60 that are nationally listed with Heritage New Zealand. The Heritage Grant Fund is available for cosmetic and restoration work for heritage sites. Owners can contact the Whanganui District Council for further information. It all depends on what your project is. If you have a, something going on that you're proposing where the cost is less than 15000 you can be refunded for up to 80% of the cost of the project. If, you're, if it's a larger one, like a big painting job or restoration of windows, something like that, and it's going to cost more than 15000 it's up to 50% can be refunded. Despite the increase in funding, the Heritage Grant Fund will still fall short of being able to cover the next challenge for Whanganui District Heritage owners. Earthquake strengthening. Georgie Ormond, Local Focus.